Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Jamaica has registered the new variant of COVID-19. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday, 13th September, 2021. Details when we return. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Corporate of Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. The new variant of COVID-19 is now in Jamaica. Minister of Health, Dr. Christopher Tufton, made the announcement on Friday. More in this TVJ News item. That uh, today we confirmed, that this is the Ministry of Health and Wellness, through tests that have been done, the presence of the new variant in Jamaica. Uh, some 26 of 90 samples tested and received today confirms it, it's the, it, the presence of this variant strain uh, locally. And I will ask the CMO shortly to expand on the implications of this new variant strain um, that is now confirmed present in Jamaica. Now, the health minister said 26 of 90 samples tested and received today confirmed the presence of the variant locally. The variant was named a variant of interest by the World Health Organization on August 30. Scientists have warned that this new variant of COVID could be more transmissible than even the Delta variant and could be vaccine resistant. Five cases of the variant were confirmed in St. Vincent earlier this week. It has been recorded in 49 U.S. states with Florida and California reporting the highest numbers of infections. In the meantime, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Basesa McKenzie details of details the timeline of the mu variant confirmed cases. These samples um, were samples that were taken from in August. Um, they they went off to the CDC on the twenty first of August, and so the the samples would have been from a few days before that. Um, we will get a better idea of the time range on the, and the persons that are involved, their age and which parishes as we analyze the results. But we just got the results today, so we can share that. We have 26 out of 92 samples that have shown the mu or what they call a mu-like variant, and we have 55 samples that were delta. So delta variant is still appears to be the predominant variant that we have in country now. Distribution of vaccination identification cards has begun. As if you are fully vaccinated, you can begin registering for yours. 45,000 cards arrived in Antigua and Barbuda last week, and over 150 have so far been issued. ABS's Jamie J. Roger reports. The government has begun issuing COVID-19 vaccination identification cards. The laminated card includes the owner's photograph and is more sturdy than the original paper cards the health ministry issues when you receive your job. Information Technology Minister, the Honorable Melford Nicholas, says he received his card at Cabinet's meeting Wednesday. It gives the government now an opportunity to improve on the enforcement that uh, we're going to need to do in the coming weeks as we go back to a state of, of normalcy when, of course, the existing uh, curfew conditions are bit. Minister Nicholas says they've embedded the cards with four security levels. The preliminary step that had to be done uh, was to ensure that the cards uh, were produced with a level of security that I had to ensure was built in into the cards to ensure that if there was ever any attempt at fraudulent duplication of the cards, they could be detected 
and of course, um, right up to the, the matter of being able to adduce evidence in a court of law. Among the features is a QR code that stores verification information. And so when persons travel abroad with this card, uh, they will be able to present it to whatever immigration or port health officials, and the intern can scan it and get the validation that the information is in fact current. The minister says residents who receive their vaccines abroad can receive a card once they register with the health ministry. Osborne Josiah leads the IT team that's producing the cards at Multipurpose Center. He says they can produce about 200 cards per day. Josiah encourages people to send their information to get vax card at ab.gov.ag. So you would send a copy of your identification, copy of your card, your physical card you were given, front and back, both sides, and a ID photo, a passport type photo, which is upright, white background. And then the card will be created and you'll be called to collect it. The centre may also set appointments for people who can't supply a digital photo. So once they come, they can, their information is verified at a station. The cards are created. We scan the card so that we have a copy of it. And then they issue their card right away within 15 minutes. Mr. Nicholas says people will need to show their vaccination cards to enter places the government designates for vaccinated people. He says these currently include bars, clubs and gyms but could extend to other places based on advice from health officials. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Over in Barbados, tourism authorities there are suggesting that Barbadians get vaccinated and comply with the COVID-19 protocols. The country would not have to worry about how global travel measures could impact their lives should this happen. More in this Barbados Today news report. Minister Cummins said Barbadians have to be committed to keeping this country safe for all, starting with other Barbadians. She said that by doing this, residents would have fewer worries when there are discussions about traffic light systems and their impact on Barbados as a tourism destination. The tourism minister is suggesting that more Barbados must be convinced to do the right thing and consider getting vaccinated where they face masks and practice physical distancing. She believes that too many of those things are not happening now, so it becomes a case where citizens, if they want the results, they have to put in the work. A BBC report has said that the traffic light overhaul could mean that green and amber categories may be removed and replaced with a new system. The report said a new system would allow vaccinated travellers to go to countries with similarly high levels of vaccination as the UK without the need for quarantine. It said the red category, which is for countries that the government says should not be visited, will remain. Under current restrictions, red countries should not be visited except in the most extreme of circumstances and travellers returning from them must self-isolate for 10 days in a government-approved hotel. The Barbados Tourism Minister said that other markets will make decisions based on their own unique circumstances and those decisions may benefit or disadvantage Barbados. But she is of the view that the country is at a further disadvantage if nationals aren't doing the right things here at home and then balking when the economic situation isn't what Barbadians want it to be. Minister Cummins say that at this time, she is hoping to see more travel from the UK and, by extension, Europe. I'm Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The COVID-19 numbers of the fourth wave of the pandemic in St. Lucia has surpassed the figures of the post-holiday outbreak. National epidemiologist Dr. Michel Francois gave an overview of St. Lucia's COVID-19 situation during a media conference on Wednesday at the GIS studios. Joachim Duplessy of HTS News Force reports. The island is in the throes of the deadliest COVID-19 wave since the start of the pandemic in 2020. 
Health officials registered the previous record high in cases in January 2021 with the third wave of the pandemic in the aftermath of the holiday season. However, the period July to August 2021 has seen far worse numbers with over 3,000 cases recorded in just 28 days. The health ministry was girding for an anticipated spike in cases following the elections, but the national epidemiologist Dr. Michel Francois says the infections have exceeded expectations. We know that with this current wave, um, it has peaked beyond what we had in earlier this year. Um, for this fourth wave, um, the highest numbers were reported within the week of August 22nd to 28th, where we recorded 958 cases of COVID-19. And this, of course, has surpassed what we had seen in January, um, where we recorded 1,110 cases. So we have surpassed by close to 36% in this current wave. There are two variants of concern on Ireland. Dr. Francois says although the lab has picked up on a couple of strains, this may not be a true representation of the numbers given the lead time for the receipt of results from CAFRA. We have recorded 54 of the Alpha and 3 of the Delta. Um, this by no means indicates that um, these are the numbers in circulation. However, um, we are challenged in terms of being able to um, diagnose or be able to, to um, serotype in St. Lucia. And so samples are sent to the Perryman Public Health Agency. And this is similar throughout the region where most of the islands do not have the capacity to do so. So we are very limited in that. And um, we are only afforded 10 samples monthly. Um, so we have a selection criteria which we put in place at the lab um, to be able to, as much as possible, detect um, cases which, we, which appear um, to be variant, one of the variants. The health ministry has also noted a 1% increase in school-aged children who contracted COVID-19. We note that 11% of the cases in this current wave are school age. And this is very important to us because, as you know, um, we have delayed the reopening of school. And while we continue to monitor the situation on the ground, um, we have noted a 1% increase in that age group. And um, we have noted also some of the regions, um, sorry, some of the islands in the region have recorded an increase in school age um, individuals being diagnosed with COVID-19. So it is a situation that we continue to monitor in St. Lucia. We are not overly alarmed yet, but it is something that we are monitoring to ensure that our children are protected. As of Tuesday, September 7th, 2021, St. Lucia had recorded some 9,200 COVID-19 cases. The Castries district had lodged the highest cases with 30% followed by Babuno with 19% and Grosily with 10%. However, in terms of the population of the constituencies, Babano has been the most adversely affected area, followed by Ancillary. Joachim Duplessy, HDS News Force. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.